I will I, I will be teaching about the uh, topic that is called electron transport chain. Now you have to know what is actually electron transport chain and where it is located. For that this is the definition of electron transport chain. Actually, it uh, resides in the mitochondria, uh, mitochondria and this is the electron support chain series of protein complexes found in the inner mitochondrial membrane whose main goal is to shuttle electron which is produced during the production of NADH in glycolytic pathway as well as Krebs cycle pathway uh, to oxygen that is molecular oxygen that is ultimate acceptor of electron and create a proton gradient that can be used to synthesize ATP molecules. That means, when electron comes from the NADH to the oxygen, then the ultimate acceptor is oxygen which uh, creates a proton gradient which is actually used to produce ATP molecules via the ATP synthase. The enzyme is called ATP synthase which creates the ATP molecules in the electron transport chain. Now, come to the second most important thing that is where it is located. Now, you can see this is the I have already told you that uh, it is uh, actually reside the electron transport chain actually reside in the mitochondria and, and, and you know that the mitochondria is present in any type of eukaryotic cell, eukaryotic cell. Okay? If you look at your eukaryotic cell, eukaryotic cell you can find this kind of structure where different types of organelle present there different suppose this is the chromosome this is something I called ribosome this is something I called mitochondria and ultimately the electron transport chain that is known as ETC which is placed which is actually occurred in the mitochondria. This is the mitochondria and also the eukaryotic cell contain cytoplasm. Okay, this is the structure of eukaryotic cell oh, okay. and it contains the mitochondria where actually the ETC is functionalized. If you look at, the, uh, at this mitochondrial structure, you can see here this is the mitochondrial structure. It has two membrane, one is uh, outside out, outer membrane and another, another one is inner membrane and the space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane is called intermembrane space, intermembrane space and this organization of inner membrane that is invagination of inner membrane is called Christi, is called Christi and mitochondria has their own DNA beyond the DNA of eukaryotic cell itself okay. and the mitochondrial electron transport chain actually occur in this inner membrane. This is these are the components of mitochondrial electron transport chain. See 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The main components of the mitochondrial electron transport chain are these four components and this is the ATP synthase where actually ATP synthesis takes place okay? and this outer membrane, this outer membrane is impermeable to different kinds of uh, ions, but can they can actually permeable to small molecules like ions and sugars okay? and this is, this is the area where actually citric acid cycle that is called Krebs cycle occur. Okay? From Krebs cycle, you know that from Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, citric acid cycle, you can generate or actually cell can generate different kinds of molecule, namely NADH or FADH2. Ultimately, this NADH and FADH2 end, ends up with the production 
of ATP via the ETC via the ETC and the ultimate ATP producer is called ATP synthase. Okay? So, ultimate electron uh, sorry, uh, ATP producer is ATP synthase and the electrons comes from NADH to different component of ETC, even FADH to, to different component of ETC. Clear? So, these are the primary location and obviously uh, foremost location of the electron transport chain in the cell that is called mitochondria. Now, come to another part another very important part of mitochondrial electron transport chain actually that is function in the mitochondria where ATP is produced via the oxidative phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation. oxidative phosphorylation. See, the, the, these are two terms, oxidative, oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidation as well as oxidation as well as phosphorylation. Phosphorylation. What is the meaning of oxidation? Oxidation the uh, electron where electron actually generated, electron actually generated that is called oxidation and phosphorylation means, phosphorylation means inorganic phosphate attachment. Suppose AD, ATP, if you break down ATP you can see this is make up of, made up of ADP plus PI. Okay? So, ultimately ADP and PI ends up with a molecule that is called ATP. So, here PI is attached to ADP that is called phosphorylation, phosphorylation. So, I have already told you that in the ATC, ATP is generated that is the phosphorylation, ATP is generated. So, so the method is called phosphorylation and why, why it is called oxidative phosphorylation because after oxidation of NADH and FADH2 the ATP is synthesized. The ATP is synthesized via phosphorylation and NADH and FADH2 ultimately uh, oxi oxidatively phosphorylate ADP to produce ATP that is why it is called oxidative phosphorylation. Clear? Another term in case of phosphorylation that is called substrate level phosphorylation, substrate level phosphorylation. That means phosphorylation in the substrate, see uh, like ADP, ADP plus PI ultimately ends up with ATP, where substrate is ADP and PI is the phosphate. So, ultimately in this case phosphorus ultimately attached to ADP that is called substrate, substrate and PI is the phosphorus. So, ultimately what happened here? So, ultimately uh, PI that is inorganic phosphate attached to ADP without the oxidation the ADP is substrate is substrate here. So, this is called substrate level phosphorylation, substrate level phosphorylation. So, in this case, in this case, in case of ETC, the ATP is produced Via, uh, via which procedure? Actually via oxidative phosphorylation procedure, not substrate level phosphorylation. Okay? In case of glycolytic pathway, you can see there glycolytic pathway where ultimately ATP is produced without using NADH or FADH2. Right? 
So, in that case ADP will be the substrate and PI will, will, will attach to the ADP and ultimately produce ATP without producing without producing any kind of NADH or FADH2 or without using FADH, FADH2 or NADH. So, in glycolytic pathway where you can see the production of ATP that is called substrate level phosphorylation. But in case of mitochondrial electron transport chain or electron transport chain where ultimately NADH or FADH2 is required to generate ATP via the ATP synthase. So, there oxidation as well as phosphorylation occur. That is why it is called oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. Another part that is a, that also a very important part. So, ETC actually occurs in the mitochondria. You can see here this is the inner membrane, this is the inner membrane, and this is invaginated, right? This is invaginated. You can ask me, sir, this can be this type also, this can be this type also, but in case of mitochondria, we can see the membrane is invaginated in condition. Okay. Why invaginated? Why invaginated or why invaginated? Okay. Why invaginated? The inner membrane is invaginated in the mitochondria. Why this is, this is occurred? Because suppose a human needs a human needs a uh, so, it is 2 kilo of ATP, 2 kilo of ATP and one mitochondria or the membrane, the one mitochondria can produce, mitochondria can produce 100 gram of 100 gram of ATP and suppose 100 gram of ATP. So, the mitochondria needs for the production of 2 kilo ATP that will be 2000 gram divided by 100 is equal to 20 mitochondria is needed, 20 mitochondria are needed to produce 2 kilo of ATP in the human cell. So, if suppose only 5 mitochondria is there, only 5 mitochondria is there in the cell, then the one mitochondria will have to produce 2000 gram divided by 5 that is 400 gram of ATP which is not possible, which is not possible because the cell has only 5 mitochondria. But in case of human 2 kilo ATP is needed for uh, natural function of human beings, but for 2 kilo ATP if one mitochondria is producing 100 gram of ATP, then 20 mitochondria is needed. But if any cell contain 5 mitochondria, then one mitochondria have to produce 200 divided by 5 that is 400 gram of ATP per mitochondria. So, how that man can survive? How that man can survive without, uh, without losing their ATP needs? So, in that case, in that case, I have already told you the components which are present in the invagin sorry in in the inner membrane that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let us suppose, let us suppose that is this is the ETC, this is the series of ETC component. Let us suppose the mito uh, mitochondrial inner membrane is this type. Okay? Then there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 component as well as another one 5 component and here 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry, 3, 4, 5 component. So, in this condition only 2 ETC can be possible in same time, right. In, in this case only as the the membrane is not invaginated, actually uh, the uh, stretch, the membrane is stretched, then only two electron transport, uh, transport chain is possible at a time. But if the membrane 
is invigorated like this, invigorated like this, then what will happen? This is the suppose this is the this is the stretching of this structure. So, this is the structure of stretching of this structure. Now, this has the this this has the place which have the two electron transport chain at a time. But in case of if you uh, invaginate the membrane, then the surface area of the mitochondria or inner membrane will be higher, right. So, in that case, in that case at a time the cell can run, the cell can run a several electron transport chain at a time. So, if any human beings have the five mitochondria, then if the mitochondrial membrane that is inner membrane is invaginated, then that is possible because at a time at it at a time the in inner membrane can generate a huge amount of ATP which actually needs by the humans or human cell right. So, that is why mitochondrial membrane that is inner membrane actually invaginated in the cell ok. And this invaginated membrane or structure is called Christi, Christi that is called Christi ok, Christi. So, the inner membrane of the mitochondria is called Christi where actually it is is uh, functionalized and produce ATP and the outer membrane actually impermeable to different kinds of molecule, but some kind of molecule like ions and sugar can be passed through it and the space which is called intermembrane space actually function a very critical role to produce ATP. I will be uh, I, I am coming later. Uh, to generate ATP via the ATP synthase. You come to see the components, components of electron transport chain. So, this is see this is the membrane, this is the membrane that is I have already told you inner membrane right, inner membrane, this is the inner membrane ok. You have already see that this is the mitochondrial outer membrane and this is the inner membrane. If you zoom in, if you zoom in in the inner membrane, then you can see this kind of structure where actually the components of ETC are uh, localized. The, the, the components of ETC are different types ok. This is the inner membrane, if you can this is the inner membrane, the uh, you can assume that this is the intermembrane space and Out, uh, outer layer of the inner membrane is uh, outer membrane and this is the matrix ok, matrix that is the cytoplasm present in the mitochondria that is called my, matrix. So, this is the inner membrane and the components of the electron transport chain lies in that inner membrane ok. I have already told you the structure where the components are uh, localized that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and if you zoom in, if you zoom in the structure you can find this kind of structure, this kind of a structure where the inner membrane actually reside the four electron transport chain component. What are they? What are they? Those four components are, those four components are first one the components of electron transport chain the four components are first one is known as complex one, second one is called complex two, third one complex three, fourth one sorry fourth one complex 4. So, these are the components actually present in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This is component 1, component 2, component 3 and component 4. All the components or individual components have their own uh, function, own function. 
So, beside the component, beside the components that is complex 1, 2, 3 and 4, there are two mobile element, there are two mobile elements, one is coenzyme Q and second one is cytochrome C, cytochrome cytochrome C, uh, it is known as CoQ, CoQ and second one is known as site C. These are the mobile electron carrier, actually what happened, I am coming later. So, now you have to know what are the components that uh, I have already told you that is complex 1, 2, 3, 4 and then what are the structural structure and function of those components, right. So, come to first one that is complex 1, complex 1. So, this is the complex 1, you can see the structure of the complex 1 is L shaped l shaped okay this is the vertic this is the horizontal part and this is the vertical part so complex 1 actually l shaped structure the vertical the vertical part uh, meets in the matrix and the horizontal part lies in the membrane so if you zoom in the inner membrane then you can find the complex where a uh, complex 1 uh, uh, the complex 1 is the L shape structure structure protein where the vertical component actually meets the matrix, matrix parts of the mitochondria and the horizontal part lies in the inner membrane, ok. And it is known as complex one, I have already uh, written here, it has an L shape structure, ok, where the horizontal components lies within the inner membrane. I have already told you that is this is the horizontal component which lies in the inner membrane and the vertical component lies in the matrix, vertical, vertical component actually meets the matrix, matrix part of the mitochondria, ok. And this complex 1, this complex 1 is known as NADH dehydrogenase, complex 1 is known as NADH dehydrogenase or NADH reductase, NADH oxido reductase, oxido reductase. So, complex 1 is also known as NADH dehydrogenase and NADH oxido reductase, any kind of uh, nomenclature you can uh, tell. So, complex 1, I have uh, in summary, complex 1 is a L shaped structure, it is known as NADH dehydrogenase and NADH oxido reductase, and it is the largest component, it is the largest component of the ATC, largest component of ATC, that is electron transport chain. So, complex 1 is the largest component of the electron transport chain and it consists of 46 polypeptide, polyp 46 polypeptide. Now, you have to know what are polypeptides, what are polypeptides. So, peptides, first come to peptide. Peptides are generated via the amino acids. Amino, the component of peptides are amino acid. Okay. Suppose this is the structure of one amino acid. Okay, and this is the structure of another amino acid. Okay. Then if this two, uh, these two amino acid actually am, uh, amalgam uh, actually do uh, attach then a peptide form. 
what will happen then? The lone pair present in the end will attack this C component and this will break down, this will break down and ultimately it will produce NH2, CH, CH, C here double bond O, N, H, C, H, H, C double O minus O minus. So, the bond between NH2 and carbonyl carbon here, this is called peptide bond, right? This is called peptide bond. C double bond O NH. This is called peptide bond, and it is actually this needs this this is needed for the formation of peptide. If a huge amount of amino acid present in the cell, ultimately they form a peptide. Suppose this is one, this is two, and and so on. Ultimately, another one amino acid will form with form a peptide bond with uh, with the uh, this C double bond O group and that is where a polypeptide is formed. This is the peptide, this is one peptide and this way polypeptide is formed. Okay. Wait a minute. Huh. Ready. Okay. So, complex 1 that is the main, uh, the largest component of the ETC, which is present first in the electron transport chain. This is the complex one. Ultimately, it has the structure like L, where the vertical, the vertical arm of the complex meets in the matrix, and the horizontal arm of the component lies in the inner membrane space, and it is called NADH dehydrogenase and NADH oxido reductase or NADH oxido reductase. And what is the function of this component complex 1? What is the function of this component in, in ETC? Function first one they actually oxidize NADH. Okay. So, they actually oxidize or accept accept the electrons the electrons from NADH molecule. Okay. So, function of the complex 1, the primary function of the complex 1 is to accept electron from NADH molecule, which is actually produced during uh, glycolytic pathway as well as Krebs cycle pathway that is called citric acid cycle pathway. Citric acid cycle pathway. So, there NADH or FADH2 is generated or uh, and in case of electron transport chain, the complex one that is called NADH dehydrogenase or NADH oxidase deductase actually accept electron from the NADH, from the NADH. So, first function of the complex one is to accept electron from NADH, not from FADH2, mind it. So, they actually accept electron from NADH only. Okay? And the second function the second function of the component is to generate a electrochemical gradient, to generate a electrochemical gradient in the membrane of the mitochondria. Right? So, first uh, function is the uh, is to accept the electron from NADH, NADH by the process they actually produce a electrochemical gradient around the membrane of mitochondria. Okay. So, how this is occurred? Actually, when complex 1 accept electron from NADH, they actually efflux, they actually efflux H plus ion, H plus ion from the matrix part, matrix part of mitochondria mitochondria right so they actually accept electron and in the process during the flow of electron from complex 1 to another component the h plus ion comes out from the matrix matrix and 
uh, accumulated in the inner membrane sorry outer uh, 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 outer membrane space of the mitochondria right and that's why the complex one actually generate a electrochemical gradient and which also required to produce atp i am coming later how actually atp is produced in uh, in the electron transport chain now come to the second one second component of the electron transport chain second component that is called complex 2 complex 2 that is second component of the electron transport chain it is also called as complex 2 and as well as the component also known as succinate reductase succinate reductase succinate reductase okay the succinate reductase enzyme which actually the complex 2 you can see here the complex 1 actually uh, round the inner membrane but in case of complex 2 they actually reside in the inner part of the membrane right that the matrix part of the membrane okay and complex 2 is also known as succinate reductase which contains an enzyme which is known as succinate dehydrogenase succinate dehydro where you can find the succinate dehydrogenase enzyme in citric acid cycle citric acid cycle you can find you can find uh, succinate dehydrogenase this enzyme which actually the component of succinate reductase of that is the complex 2 actually reside in the complex 2 that is succinate dehydrogenase which is, which is which is required in citric acid cycle where it is required to transform succinate into fumarate remind the step remind the step of citric acid cycle that is succinate to fumarate how it is happened see here c double o minus c H, C H, and C double O minus. Okay. Here one is H, and here one is H. So this is the structure of succinate. Actually, you can you can find find it in the uh, citric acid cycle. This is the succinate and via the enzyme that is called succinate dehydrogenase, I am writing SD, succinate dehydrogenase where a FAD is required to produce FADH2 and in the process the succinate actually transform to the fumarate. What will happen then? C, C double O minus H double bond C then same kind of structure C double O minus. Okay. So, ultimately these two hydrogen added to FAD that is FADH2 ultimately C C H C double C double O minus double bond C C H C C double O minus. Okay. So, this is this this was the step in the citric acid cycle where actually succinate transformed to the fumarate in the process FADH2 is produced this that FADH2 ultimately generate electron via the electron transport chain and to produce ATP in the process I am coming later. So, ultimately the complex 2 which is known as succinate reductase which lies in the inner membrane space of the inner membrane of the uh, electron transport chain actually contains succinate dehydrogenase which actually transforms succinate into fumarate. So, ultimately uh, the complex 2 and Krebs cycle are very much related and the enzyme which is succinate dehydrogenase ultimately present in the complex 2 right. Okay. So, 
what is the function then what is the function of complex to to produce first one to accept electron electron from FADH2 not NADH right so NADH only uh, generate electron in the complex one in case of FADH2 they actually generate elect uh, sorry but they actually uh, generate electron and uh, gives that electron into the complex 2 so complex the function of complex 2 actually is the accept of electron from the FADH2 and <coughs> Second one that is very much important you have to know that this complex 2 actually do not produce or do not efflux proton that is H plus ion is not effluxed, effluxed in complex, complex 2 right. So, in complex 2 actually you have already seen that complex 1 can generate electrochemical gradient via the proton pump that is the uh, that is the that is a function of complex 1, but in case of complex 2 they can accept electron from FADH2 FADH2 to produce FAD, but cannot efflux H plus ion from matrix to outer part or inner membrane space of the mitochondria right. So, this is the structure and function of complex 2. Now, the two components are there that is I have already told you complex 3 and complex 4. Now, we can see we can see what are the structure and their function of complex 3 and 4. So, now come to third one that is complex 3 complex 3 the third component the third component of the etc of the etc complex 3 the third component of the etc is complex 3 which is known as cytochrome c oxidoreductase cytochrome C oxido oxido reductase or cytochrome reductase or cytochrome reductase. So, complex 3 is the third component of the electron transport chain and it is also known as cytochrome C oxido reductase or cytochrome reductase. Now, what is the function of this complex 3? The function of complex 3 function of complex 3 function of complex 3 right. So, the first function of the complex 3 is to accept electron from complex 1 and 2 right to accept accept electron from complex 1 and 2 right so why i am telling uh, telling that so actually this is the complex 3 right this is the complex 3 and this is complex 1 and this is complex 2. Ultimately, complex 1 can accept electron and transfer to uh, directly to cytochrome uh, complex 3 and in case of complex 2, they ultimately accept electron from FADH2 ulti also the electron ends up in the complex 3. That is why I have written here the uh, complex 3 actually accept electron from complex 1 and 2 that is complex 1 and complex 2 right. So, already you have know that complex 1 can uh, accept electron from NADH and complex 2 actually uh, accept electron from FADH2 
those electrons ultimately travels through the inner membrane and ultimately ends up in the complex 3. Actually th that is why I have told you that complex 3 ultimately accept electron from complex 1 as well as complex 2, right. But in the process, during the process, the accept, uh, accept of electron and to uh, by, by flow of those electron H plus, H plus ion, H plus ion will be effluxed, effluxed from matrix to space, inner membrane space, matrix to inner membrane space. So, complex 3 also is a proton pump, complex 3 also is a proton pump, but complex 3, complex 2 is not and complex 1 also is a proton pump. So, in, uh, in these 3 component that, that is complex 1, 2 and 3, complex 1 is proton pump, complex 3 is proton pump, but uh, complex 2 is not. So, this is the function of complex 3. So, complex 3 in summary complex 3 is also known as cytochrome C oxidative reductase or cytochrome reductase which actually accept electron that were ultimately transferred to complex 1 just like complex 1 this complex is also known as proton pump and helps to generate proton electrochemical gradient. So, ultimately complex 3 accept electron from complex 1 and 2 directly. Now come, come to another component of the electron transport chain. These are very much important. If you know the complexes, you can know the through uh, whole process easily. So now come to fourth one that is complex four, complex four. That is the last component of the complex uh, e electron transport chain. That is the last component of the electron transport chain. Obviously, there is a another component which is called ATP synthase which actually produce ATP from the electrochemical gradient produced by these four components that is another component that is not related to ETC actually. Okay? That is the uh, that is the that is another component which actually produce ATP via phosphorylation. Okay? Only the electron transport chain that is electron transport is happening here only in complex 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, that is why complex 4 is the last component, last component of the ETC, complex 4 is the last component of the ETC and it is known as it is known as cytochrome c oxidase cytochrome c oxidase cytochrome c oxidase this is the fourth component which is called cytochrome c oxidase and it also pump out what actually what are the, what is the function of this complex now come to function function what will be the function so ultimately you are uh, learning about the electron transport chain i have already known that you already uh, informed that complex 1 which is the first component of the electron transport chain actually accept NADH, uh, electron from nadh the complex 2 accept electron from fadh2 complex 3 ultimately accept those electron from NADH and FADH2 to uh, uh, complex 3 and those electrons which are actually abstracted from NADH and FADH2 ultimately ends up in the complex 4 where complex 4 actually the ultimate electron acceptor where actually what happened there actually in this in this step the molecular oxygen the molecular oxygen actually accept electron which are which are already being uh, flowed in the inner membrane inner membrane of the mitochondria this com this complex 4 ultimately accept electron via via the use of molecular oxygen ultimately that oxygen transferred to 
H 2 O in the process H plus ion also pumped out, pumped out from the matrix from the matrix to inner membrane space right. So, the function of the complex 4 is to accept the electron which is actually abstracted from NADH and FADH2 by the complex 1 and complex 2 then via the complex 3 complex 4 actually accept those electrons and use it to oxidize uh, oxygen to uh, sorry reduce oxygen to H2O in the process H plus ion pumps out from the matrix to inner membrane space of the mitochondria. So, these are the four main components actually found in the inner membrane in ETC. Okay? So, these are the four very major components are required to functionalize electron transport chain. Right? There are complex 1, 2, 3 and 4. Another two components which are required to, produ to produce ATP in the ETC which is called another two components are there. They are, they are called mobile carrier, they are called mobile electron carrier, mobile electron carrier. Okay. First one is called coenzyme Q, first one is called coenzyme Q, I have shown here coenzyme Q also known as ubiquinone ub quinone. So, this is the coenzyme Q also known as EB quinone. So, what is the chemical structure of this component? Coenzyme Q also known as EB quinone is a small hydrophobic molecule. So, they are very small hydrophobic that is Hydrophobic means water phobia, right? Water phobia. Okay. So, coenzyme Q actually small hydrophobic molecule which dissolved in the membrane, which dissolve in the obviously they should uh, they should dissolve in the membrane, they should reside in the membrane because the mitochondrial outer part and mitochondrial inner part contains water. If they are hydrophobic in nature, they should they should obviously dissolve in the uh, inner mem the membrane, okay, inner membrane, not in the matrix or outer membrane space, right? So that's why they are as they are hydrophobic in nature, they should dissolve in the membrane, okay? And they are the they are the first electron carrier. They are the first electron carrier. See, this is the complex one, okay? They accept electron from NADH, okay? how they transfer, how they transfer those electrons to uh, complex 3. For that region, for that region a carrier molecule is required. In that case, the, NAD, the abstracted electron from NADH via complex 1 is transferred to Q, right, Q and ultimately Q tra traverses through the inner membrane and gives those electron to complex 3. That is why they are called mobile carrier, okay? mobile electron carrier. So, coenzyme Q is a small hydrophobic molecule that is dissolved in the inner mitochondrial membrane. It acts as an electron carrier that is mobile carrier and shuttles electron from complex 1 and 2 to complex 3. Right? In case of complex 1, the abstract electron uh, is from NADH and in case of complex 2, the electron is abstracted from FADH2 ultimately that is uh, accepted by the uh, coenzyme Q that is the mobile carrier and this uh, mobile carrier and you can say peon can actually uh, carry those electrons to complex 3. Right? So, the main function of the coenzyme Q is to carry tho those electron that is abstracted from NADH and MPVDH2 via the complex 1 and complex 2 to the complex 3. Right? Now come to another mobile carrier, another mobile carrier, second one that is cytochrome C, right, cytochrome C. So, first one was cyto uh, coenzyme Q that is also known as ubiquinone and 
second mobile carrier, right? It is called cytochrome C. What is the function of cytochrome C and where actually it is located? Now, cytochrome C, you can see here, this is the complex 3 and cytochrome C is here. So, the membrane, this is the membrane, this is the matrix, matrix part, this is the outer part, that is inner membrane space, which contain water and cytochrome C actually located in the outside of the membrane of complex 3. So, if water is there, then what will be the, uh, what will be the, what will be the chemical structure of the cytochrome C? Obviously, water loving, water loving. So, that is why they are hydrophilic. So, they are hydrophilic in nature. So, cytochrome C in case of uh, coenzyme Q, they are hydrophobic because they dissolve in the uh, membrane. Okay? So, that is why they are hydrophobic. But in case of localization, the cytochrome C present in the outer part of the membrane of uh, complex 3 and it contains, the outer part contains water. So, that should be the cytochrome C that is the mobile carrier, second mobile carrier uh, which contain, which actually carry the electron will have to hydrophilic in nature. Okay? So, cytochrome is hydrophilic in nature and the main function of the cytochrome C is to accept those electron from complex 3 which, uh, which actually comes from, comes out from uh, complex 1 and complex 2 via the coenzyme Q to complex 3. Ultimately, those electrons uh, is accepted by cytochrome C and cytochrome C is then transfer those electron to complex 4, right? Those electrons to complex 4. So, ultimately the function of the cytochrome C is to transfer, transfer electrons which is abstracted from complex 1, complex 2, uh, via the co uh, coenzyme Q to complex 3, ultimately the electrons present in the complex 2, complex 3 that are actually transferred to complex 4 via the cytochrome C, transfer of electron from complex 3 to 4. So, these are the main components of the electron transport chain, four component, four protein components are there they are uh, complex 1 also known as NADH uh, dehydrogenase, complex 2 that is uh, succinate reductase, complex 3 that is cytochrome C oxidase reductase and complex 4 that is called cytochrome C, oxid uh, sorry, cytochrome C oxidase. These are the four main component of the electron transport chain which actually needs to produce ATP from the electron via the electron transport chain and to another mobile carrier which actually uh, function as peon to, uh, to, uh, uh, to carry those electron from complex 1, 2 and 3, those are coenzyme Q and cytochrome C. Thank you. Thank you very much.